We're in a biodiversity hotspot down here on the south coast of WA between the Stirling Range National Park and the Fitzgerald River National Park. And the Fitzsterling's kind of like a little hotspot within the hotspot in a fragmented landscape that's been affected by clearing for agriculture. So reconnecting our landscape here in the Fitzsterling is our number one goal. It's really important that we do that to make sure that we, we give our animals and, and plants and particularly the biodiversity that we see in, in this landscape the fighting chance for survival. Way back in the 1990s when we first got access to satellite imagery, we could see on a large scale what was happening in the wheat belt and over 90% of the wheat belt is cleared, whereas we've still got over 30% of the vegetation in this particular catchment that we're working in. So it gives us something really, really solid to work from and sources of seed and plants and animals as well. We're trying to address the ongoing effects of clearing and isolating patches of bush by reconnecting that landscape right across. In Bush Heritage, what we're doing in this area is we're, we're planting more bush. We're revegetating what were paddocks and we're putting the native flora back and then the fauna comes back on its own. And we're having a lot of success with that. It's very heartening to know that if, if you build it, they will come. That, that idea that by restoring native vegetation, is providing a real strong habitat for those animals to return. Bird species like the Carnaby's black cockatoo, the western whipbird, they're all species that we'd like to provide them with further protection. And the hope is that over the years native fauna will increase. As part of our monitoring, every year in spring we conduct our native fauna trapping which can cater for a number of different animals and their movements, and just know what's on our reserves and notice the changes from year to year. We want to ensure that we're adding value and we're having the impact that we desire. Seeing some of those native animals returning to our reserves, for me personally, it's just so gratifying. In the case of honey possums, it's really hard to, to not be seduced by them. They're, they're just beautiful little animals. They look so delicate, they look so fragile, and yet in the midst of all these threats, they are persisting. So that gives me a lot of hope, and the fact that we have them occurring naturally is, a, is just a, is a joy. I just think, you know, with something so small and precious, like these little pygmy possums and honey possums, you know, it'd be, it'd be a real tragedy to see those, those perish without, any, without us doing anything about that bush heritage, has come up with a plan for a fauna recovery project to reduce the, the feral predator populations. We've also put out cameras to test if we're having success in baited versus non-baited areas. The pygmy possums are coming back into the reveg. Mallee fowl coming back into the reveg. The Tamar wallabies as well, seeing them still around. That to me shows that by removing these feral predators, we're really giving these guys a bit of a shot to survive in these remnant pockets of bush. Throughout the years, we've lost so many species through human impact. Moving forward, we, we really need to make sure that we do protect what we have left. Now is the time, and there's some urgency here, that we all band together and, and work to protect these species, these habitats, these landscapes for, for future generations. And I, I don't want to see this here in you know, two or three generations. I'd love for, for people to be able to experience this amazing place for, for millennia to come. Mm -hmm.